Welcome to RVing in New England, the nation's only forum that puts you on stage with some of the biggest names in the RV industry. And now your hosts, John DiPietro and Bob Zagami. Thank you, William. I appreciate it. We, uh, Bill Sell is with us tonight on the production side because we are in Elkhart, Indiana, and in Goshen. Actually, Goshen. we are in Goshen, Indiana, home of Keystone <laughs> RV. We originally, when we told you we were going to be broadcasting from Goshen, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Goshen. No, Goshen. It's in Indiana, John. We said oh, we well. might think about doing it at the RV Hall of Fame, and our friends here. To my right, well, you're looking at the other side of me, but to my in, in my up. camera. Is Jeff Reynolds, president and CEO of Keystone RV. And over with Mr. DePietro, we have Kevin Hawkey, who is a frequent visitor to our show. Hold Jeff on. suggested, well, no, just a minute. I can talk. We'll I can Jeff, talk. Jeff is two minutes of fame. Jeff, <laughs> let Jeff. me introduce Kevin. All right, go ahead. Thank you. Here's Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> Jeff found out about it and he said, he suggested, he kindly suggested, he says, hey, why don't you guys? do the show from Keystone RV. So this was just a thought about two, two weeks ago. And we put his team put this whole thing together. And it's a new test for us, too. I want you to, after the show, send us your notes. Do you like it? Did you have fun with it? Is it a good format to go with? And, and we may do some of these in the future. But we are sitting right here. And let me just warn you, if you like it, comment. If you don't, just I think they're going to like it. I think well, they're going to like it. Actually, if you like my comments better than John's, it's okay to say that too. Right. Hey, Bob, uh, there's a guy sitting next to you. Do you want to let him talk? So, Jeff, would you like to say a few words? No, I'm enjoying it's it. Your, no, I it's your it. building. It's your show. Go, your go company. Ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. No, we're, it was. It was two weeks ago. And um, so this is just a wild suggestion and we've had you here all day. And I was actually just saying, based on some of the clips I've seen, I'm excited to see what the team put together because it has been a team effort. So, yeah. and we appreciate you guys being here. We, uh, we always like having visitors on campus. Yeah. It, it's a great team that we worked with and special thanks to Christy Spencer who coordinated it. She had everything lined up. She had everything coordinated. She told us where we had to be, when we had to be there, who was coming in, where the units are going to be. She just did an incredible job. She's such a tremendous asset. It was, to it was nice RV. she was telling you what to do instead of me for once. Well, but that's First good. Yeah. That's good. So, what, but, uh, John, read some comments. Who we got out there? Look at, look at, we got Jim Conboy from New England RV Roof. Hi, Jim. And uh, Bernie Carlton from um, Campers and Campers, Campers in RV. Yeah. Jerry Plant from Majors RV is there from Cape Cod. Bernie's there again. Welcome, Jeff and Kevin. Chris Andrew, I think you guys know who Chris Andrew is, right? Hemlock Hill RV. Hemlock Hill, one of your top yeah. Cougar dealers. Yeah, he's a great now, piece of Cougar now dealer. You notice, now you notice, Chris sometimes joins us, sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he joins us 20 minutes late, 30 minutes late. All but of he sudden, apologizes. All of a sudden, he reads the announcement today, and he says, Runnels and Hawkey, maybe I should be there when the show opens. <laughs> right, Chris? Yeah, exactly. Chris is all excited. He just set up all of his uh, <laughs> Keystone RVs down at uh, the campground. So him and Jason are all set up. Michelle, I expect, too. So, yeah. Jay, uh, Chris, any other words of wisdom from you? Walter Swenson. Hey, Walter, you stay tuned, because the last video that we're going to show. Oh, that's Walter. It's Walter. It's got Walter written all, written all over. over it. Now, this, this, this thing, they should even change the name of this to the Walter Swenson fifth, Montana Fifth Wheel. Hey, Bob, you know what I think we should do is tell the people, in case they can't see it close up enough, that right between you and Jeff, there's a word on the side of this unit that we're in. What does that word say? Kevin, I can't read it. Can you read it? I can read it pretty clear. It's, it's our Cougar Fifth Wheel. So we're on our 25th anniversary. And, uh, it's one of our new floor plans, the Cougar 320 RDS, which is our rear den. Rear den. What's the S stand for? Slide. Oh, rear right here. den. Oh, and we're in it right here. We're we in are it. in the rear. Look at, look at, Bob, I'm going to look at, here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to give people a little tour of this thing. There's, there, there it is. You Kevin, do you want to tell people what, what they see here? Yeah, Kevin, tell them what we're looking at. It's a 36 foot travel or 36 foot fifth wheel what we did is is we incorporated a sectional sofa in the rear dinette slide with a pop-up 60 inch tv 
But the great thing about this floor plan is you don't have to reconfigure your furniture. Look at that. When you're bringing the slide in or out. Because hey, Kevin, 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 yes. I got, I got to stop you. Do okay. not mention what's at the front of this unit. Right. That's a surprise. You can explain the living area. Yeah. You can explain the kitchen. You can explain the living room. Stop there. Fair enough. Okay. There's the floor. And there's the ceiling. That's nice. Good picture. That's all we can tell you. Yep. Okay. There's the kitchen. Right? There's yep. the kitchen. And we'll go sit down now, Bob, so you can uh, whatever. But we, we did promise that we would say the word cougar at least a hundred times we appreciate <laughs> that, during the show, despite Jeff Runnels. But, you know, in, in, in fairness to Kevin, I, I thought he was very generous. He did not wear his cougar shirts tonight. He usually no, he, he, he the stuff. corporate authority and said, we're going to yeah. go with Keystone. And you yeah. question him on that, I right? Did. Question I say, did. you know, why are you doing that? Yeah. He's a team player. Yeah, he's a team player. Yes. Yeah. And uh, Jim Conboy said that that unit has a flex armor roof. It does? So, yeah. Well, what we want to go to is Tim. He's a good dealer. Where is Ryan, Amy? Tri oh, Tim. Oh, Tim? Yeah, Tim. He's Tim's RV? Yeah, gentleman. Great guy. Yes. Great guy. Great dealership. Yep. One of, one of the nerved his best. Yeah. Has yep. come out. So, Bob, we should tell our audience that we've got a very special show because rather than just four guys here, Kibitzing, how's that for an old time word? <laughs> Talking about um, things in no order. We actually have an order of activities for tonight, and we are going to show them all about how they can camp better, how customer service is being looked at very closely here, how, as I look out right now, and you're looking right at it too, this testing chamber is absolutely amazing. And then we're going to talk about the future of travel trailers. And then at the end, we are going to give a tour of this unit that we're in right now. We're going now. to do the Montana. We're going to do the Montana. Oh, we're, this is not the Montana? Yeah. This oh, is that's in the, the other Cougar, room. Yeah. Okay. We're in the Cougar. That's on, that's on video only. Uh, but to your point, we are probably more organized, which is not our – that's not our not strength. Our style. We're yeah. probably more organized for this show tonight. And that's why I'm interested in the comments than we have ever been. You know, I mentioned Christy before. Owns a cougar. Oh, well, we see Kevin's pointing out yeah. Cheryl. Go ahead. Yeah, welcome Cheryl Kilroy. She's an ambassador for us. She owns a, a cougar, fifth wheel, and is a great customer for us. And she just, she promotes our brand. And we love her for that. So thanks, nice. Cheryl. Thanks for joining us, Cheryl. That's, I appreciate that. United so uh, we were talking about Christy. Why don't, we, why don't we switch to your that's interview right, with Christy this, uh, this afternoon, all about what's what's the title of this one, John? Camp what? Um, this is called Camp Better. Oh, I, I, that was a test. I really wanted to see if you remembered what it yeah. was. Yeah. Well, considering I figured out everything else here. All right, William. Hey, everybody! Welcome back to our segment on Keystone, and you know what? It's always special to have the people from the upper echelons of the corporation, <laughs> especially in marketing. And we're here with Christy Spencer. And Christy, you, I understand, are in charge of an amazing new program called Camp Better. That's right. Okay. Tell me a little bit about Camp Better, what it's supposed to do, and how it got started. Yeah. So, you know, I've been at Keystone for about five years and um, obviously part of my job is to market our products. Mm -hmm. But Keystone has a really big platform. We have over a million owners on the road. We have 5,000 employees. We've got 1,200 dealers. You have a giant megaphone. Giant megaphone. Giant yeah. megaphone that people That people, we're talking respect. about people every day. Part yep. of what my team does is talk with people yep. every day. And, and you know, when we started um, talking to owners, talking to everybody, we, we wanted to have a voice. We wanted to talk with intention and do things that were bigger than product right bigger bigger than much more than the hardware much more than the hardware okay so so we as a company sat down and talked with owners and each other and and talked about what we wanted to stand for and how we wanted to show up in the community and i think um i think as we started talking with people a few themes became really 
obvious to us, mm -hmm. apparent to us. Now, when you say we want to show up in the community, do you mean the RVing community as a whole or the or the Elkhart Goshen mm -hmm. community? I mean the RVing community as, as a whole. whole. Because again, you've got all those people got that are people. got your label on them. Yeah, yeah. And and I think, you know, we're having conversations with each other and with folks. The Gami's in the background waving at me. Can I say that out loud? You just did. <laughs> you just did. <laughs> We told you it was informal. It is super. <laughs> no, but I, I think that, that we have a responsibility as corporate citizens, yep. citizens to bring more to the camping conversation, and, and we want to. That's, that's, that's how we want to, to um, show up in the world. So, so we had some um, conversations with our owners and with each other and with our dealers and, and um, found three things that we really thought we could champion. Okay, one. So one is kindness. Kindness. And okay. you know, we talked about this earlier. You see this with RVers all the time. We help each other. As 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 the RVing community, we are predisposed to help each other. So how can we empower that, celebrate it, um, you know, make that make that movement even bigger than it is today? So okay, that's number one. Kindness number two. is really important. And by the way, we talked about this too. Forty percent of new R of RVers, people who bought RVs through the pandemic years, have never owned an RV before. Yep. So they need kindness as much as anybody. RVing's hard. Yep. Well, you they know. need kindness, but they need um, somebody who's going to help them when they're trying to back in for the first time, exactly. or they're trying to um, the infamous sewer hose, <laughs> right? Back whether it's yeah. whether it's the um, entry level product or the expensive one. That's something that all campers have in common. Yeah. And kindness. Okay. Yep. And then, then the next thing we um, we wanted to talk about was community, and um, you know part of part of the camping experience is getting out from your screens and your houses, yep. you know your suburban houses with your garage doors, and and meeting people and, and learning, and and um, we wanted to facilitate that, so we wanted to build a tightly knit community of campers. Okay. So I'm told that you found a group that you refer to as ambassadors. We do. Um, how many how many rigs? We have 50 ambassadors, 50 rigs. Okay, yeah. so people from all different geographic areas, socioeconomic areas, et cetera, et cetera, right? Yep. So it's, it's a diverse group. It's a diverse group. Wh what are you finding? What are you finding with this group? What are they, uh, what are they doing that's, that makes you have that smile? Yeah, so. That unrehearsed <laughs> smile. <laughs> our ambassadors, I just did a call with them last night. Our ambassadors are incredible. So when we recruited our um, 2022 ambassadors, we look for people who are putting good in the world. And, and, you know, we have people like Brian and Tina Jones who, who they're the people who they see somebody having a problem at the campsite, they're the first to help. And we had, we've gotten a couple of letters from folks that they've helped. And, and uh, okay. uh, Bob and Grace from Two Veterans on the Move, they, every time they make a stop, they find a local uh, soup kitchen mm -hmm. or food pantry. They go down out. to Fort Myers yep. to help out. Um, so we just got, we've got our owners on the daily are out helping, our ambassadors on the daily are out helping people. In fact, we just sent out boxes of these t-shirts. Yep, so which say camp, camp better. better. So they could, when our ambassadors see other people who are doing good things in the world, so kindness community, we didn't talk about planet, protecting the environment. Mm -hmm. When they see other campers who are doing good things in the world, they can recognize their contributions by giving them a t-shirt. So that's ah, just okay. happening right now okay. over the next And months. you know the interesting part of the t-shirt is that it says Keystone on it, but it's not big. It's not blatant. It's not, we're good, and so you should like us. Yeah. Or buy more campers. You're not really trying to sell more campers. You know, You're trying to... Uh, it's a movement. It's, yep. It has, it has. you know, of course, Keystone owners, owners are going to be involved, but it's a movement that we hope transcends, you know, Keystone and is all campers. Okay. So uh, the plans are to continue the program? The plans are absolutely to continue the Maybe enlarge program. it, that type mm -hmm. of thing? Yep. Every okay. year we think it's going to grow. Is there a place that people can go to find out more about Camp Better? Is there a uh, anything on the yeah, Keystone if you website. check out our website, and particularly if you go look at our ambassadors, you'll see how each of them contribute and give back. So I think if you go to Keystone Insider on the website, you can find that information. There we go. Yeah. So now, back to our live group right in the studio. Great That's job. The live group. Very, um, great, great job. Uh, we, had, we did have a note. Somebody was looking for toy haulers. We don't have, here we go. It was uh, Frank. Frank, where's the Airstream? Anybody for a toy? We don't have one, but uh, Kevin, off the top of your head, which brands in Keystone would have toy hauls? 
our, our Raptor and Fusion brands, and we have our New England dealers carry those, both of those brands. Yep. Yep. Okay. That's good. Um, and you see. see. Yay, Cougar in the background. <laughs> see, Bob, that last week. Jeff, see yeah. that last minute shift. Yeah, but but I, I think you ought to put up uh, Tim's sympathy uh, quote, Bill. With me hanging out with DePetro all evening? Yeah, sympathy, sympathy. You have John DePetro hanging out with you all weekend, all day. All day, right. Exactly. This is, uh, yeah, tomorrow, breakfast tomorrow morning. Bob, we should tell people, what are we going to be doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we're going to go to the RV Power Breakfast, which is – all the people that should be there that know most about the RV, and you know, they get a thousand over a thousand over people who go to breakfast at six thirty in the morning, and that's so they can get back to the office by ten or eleven. And Keystone's got a big, big group of people going over there tomorrow. They're cooking yep. the eggs, Jeff. You're scrambling the eggs, right? Yeah, yep. cooking the eggs and scrambling them. And Kevin's doing the hash well, brown. Well, he's serving the bat. Yeah, the bacon. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. So Chris Andrew says, "Love camp better." At Hemlock, we like to say better camp. Okay. Right, exactly. Because it really so, does. So when, did, so when did they add Andro to the marketing department at Keystone? How long has he been selling your product? Well, we've been, uh, we've been, been around yeah. for 25 yeah. years. And I think Chris is pretty close to being all 20 plus of those years with us. So almost the whole time. Yeah. Camp better. Great movement. Great slides. And Chrissy, gave, that Chrissy gave us all these slides. I know we're good, but she's better. She gave us all these slides. Yep, she's better. So, Bob, why don't we move on to... Huh? You had the opportunity to talk to um, two people that handle customer questions. Uh, do we want to go to that video now? Yeah, Sasha and Tracy? Stacy. Casey. Casey. Casey and Sasha. They will talk behind the scenes of what they do to keep the Keystone customer is happy. And sometimes, you know, as we all know, sometimes the phone calls that come in are not always nice ones. But watch how they handle them and the, the staff that they have to take care of them. Three, two, one. All right, we're back with another interview. I've got Sasha Reines and Casey Finley with Keystone. And Sasha, you're with customer service. I am. And Casey, you're in the marketing experience department. I am. And you're part of this behind the scenes type of thing when you're talking to your consumers and what have you. So Sasha, why don't you start? Tell us, tell us what you do and why it's important to Keystone. So I'm the owner relations manager at Keystone and we have the end line customers that call into us and it can be any concerns they may have, questions, uh, use of the product. So end line customer being the, the user and the owner of Correct. some Keystone product. Correct. Yeah. Very important role. Um, if we aren't there to intercede and talk with our customers, then where are they going to go? So you're in that department that gets the not so happy customer calling up about something. Correct. And your role is within 30 seconds or a minute, make them a very happy customer. Absolutely. And solve Every the problem. Time. Yes. How do you challenge that one, Casey? Well, my job is to make sure that the owners are happy. So I'm all about their experience and making sure that they have the resources and everything to get into contact with Sasha and her team and to make sure that they've got everything at their fingertips. And you, and you work a lot with the content that, that the customers see on exactly. their computer screen or on yep. videos. So what types of content do you push out there? Oh, so we actually push out a lot of different things. We've got our My Keystone app that we push out everything that's on our website, but it's at the ease of their fingertips, so they can have it very readily available while they're on the road. Um, I also do the owner nurture, so different newsletters that go out to new owners as they're joining the Keystone family, as well as our existing owners, talking about, you know, type of innovation that we have our DIY program, our first time camper series, just putting all of that out there that gives them the resources of how do they utilize their RV? How do they find that community and the connections and where do they need to go? That's a lot of information, but you have a tremendous educational program to push that out. Sasha, I, I spoke earlier about your role, but it's not you. It's a whole team of, this isn't, so, this wasn't an afterthought for Keystone. This was a very, you know, important role to make sure that the customer is always happy with the company. That is correct. And if they're not, then to, and it's okay to make mistakes. 
It but absolutely it's better, is. It's better to fix them. So talk about your team and, and how they approach that. So our team is, we currently have a team of 30. We take all customer contact in for, through social media, RV chat. Um, our dealers will reach out to us and ask for some assistance with customers, along with general calls into the call center. We have a fully staffed call center available to our customers. On top of the 30 people. We do. And you've got a lot of customers out there. We do. Is, <laughs> We've got well is, over is, a million on is this own. Is there such a thing as a slow time for your group? It slows down slightly, hmm. um, but there's always questions. There's unfortunately always concerns. Something comes up. So, no, it slows down a little in the winter, but we've got areas in California, for example, that year are round. camping year-round. So we want to be available for our customers year-round. John spoke earlier to Christy about the customers in the Camp Better program and things that you're doing for them. Are most of those decisions driven by the customer in your communication with the customer saying, you know, the customer needs this, or do you come up with the programs and field test them with the consumers to see if they like them? Honestly, it's a little bit of both. We're listening to what the owners are asking for and we're going back collaboratively and trying to come up with the different things that we feel that Keystone can actually put out there available for them so they have those resources. Um, the DIY program was generated based off of some of the calls that are coming in from the owner base of, you know, if, if I had this quick, I could do it myself or, you know, here's something, I don't want to take it off the road to go into the dealership and lose any time camping. So it's, it's kind of a hand-in-hand -hand opportunity for us to listen and do. Huge on customer feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, They're out there using them. We need to know what they want. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of your time while we're here Absolutely. this week. And uh, we'll get back to the regular programming. So Bill, we must get regular programming. Yeah, Bill, do me a favor. Pull up uh, Cheryl's comments at 720 and 721 so that everybody can see those. And Cheryl, you, there you go. Sasha, you've probably talked to Cheryl a few times. She's very appreciative of what you're doing over there. And Gabriella, who, if the next comment up, Bill, uh, she's also on your staff. So that's very important, very good feedback. You get a lot, do you get a lot of feedback from customers? Um, the quality of the programs are unique. Uh, you're in a constant contact with them. How do you get that message to your staff? Come up a little bit closer here, Jeff. So I was just going to say while I was watching that video, uh, one of the things you'll see is Sasha, as an uh, example, she goes to shows. So you'll see her at the Hershey show. You'll see her at the Tampa show. And so a lot of times, Casey as well, you'll see us testing things, um, communicating directly with the customers right on site. And I've seen both of them have just a great um, way about them. They, they really they bleed blue for Keystone. Um, and I've seen them in very tough situations. But they learn everything firsthand with those customers. And then they bring a lot of that back and, and we kind of um, take it through their groups and through the sales group. So, um, but it's very much, um, very much frontline experience and we yeah. bring it back and test it. Yeah. John, speak to that. We saw that throughout the day at every department. Speak to the attitude that you saw here at Keystone. Well, I saw the attitude that um, everybody that um, our contacts set up to speak with us um, how do I say this the right way without sounding like it's fluff, but they all generally seem to like what they do. I think that's probably the best way to put it. And, you know, that attitude starts at the top because if you've got people that um, make it miserable for you to do their job, that, that's not the way to do it. And uh, Jeff, what, how many years is it now? 27 years with Keystone? I've been with 18. Yeah, 27 years Keystone's been, uh, been around. I've been here 18 Porky's been here 35. So, <laughs> 35, yeah. He's yeah. not even 35 years old. He's, not, <laughs> he's still a kid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But, but, Jeff, the figure that I heard is that there's over a million units on the road. Yes. Yep. We have right. over a million retail customers. Well, and you know, some, from that some perspective, mean, just finish this, this one, one thought um, the megaphone that Keystone has is huge. And when it comes from corporate uh, or any of the subsidiaries, you know, whether it's one of the individual brands, um, it really is another way to connect with its owner group. And I mean, wouldn't you say that your owners 
are your best source of new business, um, whether it be for themselves or somebody that they say, hey, we love our cougar. I'm, I was going to say, I saw you guys looking at some of the signs we have on the walls here earlier. And one of the first things on our, you know, and our who we are is we all work for the customer because we still to this day, one of the, the first things we do when we come back from a show is figure out, OK, what are we doing right? What are we doing wrong? How do we fix it? And um, and so we communicate very regularly. You heard Christy talk about our ambassadors. Um, that's a newer program that we've continued to grow over the last several years. Our ambassadors are phenomenal, not only at what they do for us, but what they do for other campers. And that's not just for Keystone campers. I mean, they'll go out and help anyone. But they bring us back such good information. Um, and they do. They have a huge megaphone. So it's it's that is a number one for us. Yeah. And the reality um, is who no, bring up Sam. Bring up Sam's comment. Who, you guys know who Sam is? Over. <laughs> huh? Kevin, Jeff. See the guy we ran into in the hallway tonight? That, yes. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, so, so only, but wait, a minute, wait a minute. He only notices the people, you know, that he works for. I mean, he didn't well, because, say anything about you and I. You, you know, we don't even have RVing in New England tonight. That's we, right. we deferred to the, our guests and, and them inviting us into the house. So we, we've got our own Keystone shirt, Sam. Keep one thing in mind. Okay. Sam, Great to meet you in the hallway, too. Sam yeah. is trying to um, endear himself. his career here so he uh, knows where to blow smoke. Sam yeah. is he's <laughs> one of our product managers over a couple brands. And uh, Sam, lucky to have him. He's he's the guy that develops the floor plans, helps with interiors. He's a, he's rock solid with our company. Yeah. I was going to say, if you want to talk to about somebody who gets down on the front level and talks to the customers, Sam brings everything he does in products and he's worked through a lot of our products. Uh, he gets it all from the customer. He's very right. good. At it. And, and you have to get to the shows. Yeah. Bring up Uncle, Uncle Bernie. What's that? Bring oh, up Uncle Bernie. Bernie. Bill, can you get Bernie? So I'll read that. Uh, wow. Keystone is, very pro communication and customer response. It's a great way to set Keystone apart from the other manufacturers. And I don't think Bernie sells Keystone, right? No, uh, no. no, he's no, he's up at Campers Inn in the New England area. Yeah, and, yeah. and we have some other surrounding dealers. Yeah, yeah. So I want to get I want to get Chris's comment, but not just yet, Bill. Kevin, you're our rep in the Northeast for Cougar, and you have Pete's RV up in Vermont. You got. Hemlock Hill in Connecticut with Chris mm -hmm. and Jason and Michelle. You've got three or four Camping World stores up there. As the person responsible for that territory, speak to the importance of the team that you have back here in Goshen as to how they support you and why is that important. You know, a lot of sales reps don't ever last 20 years with a company, especially in the RV industry. Well, it helps when your father-in-law is the <laughs> chairman of the board. <laughs> here, really, it's so, just a here we have such a great support team you know I, I i would love to you know just expand on some of the things here a i don't know how to build them so thank goodness i know how to sell them right you know so just starting even with our lamination facility our r d and and the products that we're able to develop but some of the great things that we've come up and innovative things as far as the do-it-yourself program my keystone app everything's around by the develop and, and surrounded by the customer to camp better. That's where we're going with our company. And it's the support factors. It's unbelievable. And unfortunately we don't give them enough, enough credit sometimes because they're not on the front lines, but without them, it, it just, it doesn't work. You know, it's a, it's a team, you know, of, of 4,000 employees that come into work every day that believe in the company where we're going with the, within all of our brands. And, uh, you know, uh, Sasha, if I have trouble, I can call her directly. It's, it, it's an open door policy. It's just it's a wonderful company to work for. And, uh, you know, I've been blessed in my career and, you know, I'm here 20 years within the company and, and you know, multiple 10 plus 12 years, you know, with the Cougar brand. So it, it's been a great run. But and I can't do it without my dealers, you know, the, 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 the dealers that we have and support our product. You know, every brand goes through a high and low and, and, you know, 25 years we survived and we can't do it without our dealers and our customers with the repeat buyers that we have. And that's all driven by some of the behind the scenes stuff that you can't really see what's going on. You guys got a good taste of it today, but the customer at a show just sees the product only and that's it, you know, and, and we're as good as our dealers and, and our salespeople on the front lines, but it's all the back end of our business that helps us get to the front line. Yep, that's so. a good point. And uh, Jeff, I don't know if you heard Kevin say, but 
and all of our brands. Talk about some of the other brands that are on the street that are part of the Keystone umbrella. Yeah, well, we cover every segment. So you heard us talk a little bit about our toy haulers, Fusion and Raptor earlier. We do um, entry level with our, our stick and tin products, Springdale's, hideouts. Um, we do lightweights, so we have a passport and a bullet line. Um, and then we have a counterpart to Cougar, which is um, Arcadia, another mid-profile setup. And then we have, you know, our bigger brands, which um, Montana and Alpine Avalanche, and they do some of the more residential full-time stuff. And um, and then we have some brands within brands here. So um, because you can't satisfy everyone with one, you know, one package, one color. And um, But we have the 12 home brands and we cover, you know, we cover a, a wide variety, um, all in the towable. So and we're proud of that. I mean, we are we are one big campus here, which you guys got to see today. But in every product, every brand here has its own team. So you have your own set of engineers, your own purchasing agents, your own sales team, your own. So really, we have 12 different companies that exist right here within Keystone that are competitive sometimes and helpful to each other sometimes. And, and then, of course, like like Kevin said, we have the dealer horsepower which, with each of those brands and not every brand. Um, works for every dealer. We are we are a la carte. We want our dealers to to do what is best for their their um, yeah. their yeah. dealerships. Yeah, Kevin, I agree with everything you said except for one thing. Chris Andro told me that he taught you everything you know about selling. Hey, he, he's <laughs> he's a great teacher, and you know sure. credit to him and, and and his processes that he uses. You know, I mean, it's a family owned dealership, and you know they've survived everything, right? The ups and downs of the business, and they're growing. You know, they have a great service department on the back end, and you know the the owners are involved there every day, which is helpful. You know, it's a it really is a true family business there. Yeah. Well, speaking and about family businesses, Mark pull up Lebrecht. Mark Lebrecht. Mark Lebrecht. Yeah, Jeff, yeah. Jeff, Jeff caught that too. Hey, bring, bring up Mark Lebrecht. Uh, Mark. 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 Mark is now retired, but there was another great family business started with his dad years ago, and uh, he's retired, sold to Camping World. So that is Camping World in West Hatfield now. And Mark says they still have a product. They still, they're product. still a cougar dealer. Yeah. Yeah. Being a cougar dealer. Yeah, huh? yeah. Mark's good. How about how about Swenson's comment about his Springdale? Yeah. Would right. you like me to read it? Nice products yeah. overall. We had a small Keystone Springdale that we rented out for two years. Yeah, he did. He did one of those peer to peer. He bought, he bought that one specifically to do peer to peer and had it out there uh, for two years. And, which one? Go Chris, about the swag. Chris Andrews comment. So um, right there, Kevin talks. Seven twenty seven. Yeah. So real quick. And I, I, you know, we were limited time on the show, but. So during COVID, we're, we, we couldn't travel, right? Everybody was locked down. I, I couldn't travel to Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey. So we developed what's called um, Keystone Ignite. And it was a way for us to continue to reach out to our dealers through training. It's a, it's a training app sales portal. And it's just continued education for our sales guys. Here, we'll talk about Hemlock um, quickly. And I'm out to his store probably three or four times a year, plus his shows. I can't be there 365 days a year. So during COVID, I couldn't be there at all. So with Ignite, we were constantly still reaching to his sales guys to train on the product. And with Ignite, we, we incentivize them. We're now, if they complete courses and sell our product, then they're able to earn some swag. So they're supporting us all the way through. So yeah. and it is good quality stuff. I, I particularly am fond of the, the hoodie that yeah. says Keystone <laughs> RV Company on it. Yeah, and, um, you Let's, know my wife likes the mink coat that says Keystone yeah, RV. Yeah, she does. On it, and she's a size medium. So, Let's jump back to the videos for a minute. I want to show you something that you you will not see at a lot of RV manufacturers. Let's but see. before we go to that video, I want to say something about it because there's one thing that I learned when we were doing it is that as we look out into the testing center right there, um, not every product that is tested on these Keystone products passes. And to me, the value of it is when they kick something back and say, you know what, at a certain temperature, it's not gonna respond properly because it's too cold or a certain temperature because it's too hot, this product, this component is not gonna work right. So I know that you had an excellent um, interview and maybe Bill can play that now. Yep, bring up the Innovation Lab. In Okay, we got another great video for you. I'm in the Innovation Lab at Keystone RV. 
with Levi Noiserling. And Levi, what a fantastic operation. I mean, this this is an engineer's dream. Absolutely. And you're an engineer. Yes, sir. All right, and so is John. We, he's out walking around with Kevin somewhere. Tell us about the Innovation Lab, and, and especially this unit right here. Yeah, absolutely, Bob. So we're working with our um, temperature test chamber. What this allows us to do is really dive into HVAC performance testing. In the past, HVAC performance has been more based on airflow of your unit. And what that really tells you is your fan speed and your furnace and your air conditioner. What this unit allows us to do is go from negative 10 up to 100 degrees, 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and really start to look at your pull down and pull up performance of an air conditioner or a furnace. All right, for a consumer, what's what does that pull mean? up and pull down? <laughs> sure, absolutely. So a pull up test would be, we would take this unit down to the bottom temperature, negative 10 degrees, and we would actually soak the units so that this would be emulating a camping situation where you get to your campsite and it's freezing cold inside and outside of your unit. And that pull up test, we're gonna go inside your unit, start the furnace, and see how well that furnace can perform at such an extreme temperature. Pull down temperature testing is exactly the same, but the opposite. So we start at 110 degrees and pull down to a steady state inside the RV. Yeah, you know what's great about that is it's all about the data. Absolutely. And you're an engineer and you know, for years we didn't do that. Let's take a walk inside and show us some of the technology yes, and that's creating all of this data for you. Let's go between these two units here. Is this a good place to talk? Yes, sir. Okay. So why don't you come on over this side and tell us some of the things that you're doing. John, I don't know if you can just kind of swing up and around and, and see the ceiling and the uh, extensiveness of this. So this is a climate control chamber. Yes, sir. So for a consumer looking at this thing, well, what does that do for me? Why is that important when I buy an RV that, that it's been through something like this? Absolutely. So this chamber allows us to pull our largest travel trailer and fifth wheel inside with all the slide rooms open. And we can take 64 thermocouple um, channels. So essentially what that means is we can put 64 thermometers inside your unit and we can really do a deep dive on that study. We can also control humidity and monitor current draw and sound levels. So what this allows us to do is we can really dive in and compare two or three or as many model air conditioners and furnaces as we'd like. And us at Keystone, we wanna make sure that when the customer gets their unit, they're completely happy with the products that are installed so that they don't have to do the playing around with what works and what doesn't. Okay, but the sensors are not just inside. You must have outside sensors too because we're controlling the That's exterior correct. environment. Absolutely, so we can monitor, like I said, up to 64 channels. That's a very flexible system. So let's say we wanna look at tank heat pads and really see how they perform against each other at those low um, temperatures that you would see. We can really dive into that by putting immersion thermocouples inside of our tanks to see how those perform against each other. Okay, and pretty soon here, but the other thing that you do is any component, if you were going to change any component on any RV that Keystone RV makes, they have to come through you and John. Yes, sir. If it doesn't pass your test here, it's not going on a product, right? We do a lot of material testing as well as electronics testing to make sure that when it rolls out into the plant, it's friendly for production and it's friendly for the end customer. So we really dive in, look at it with a fresh set of eyes. That's someone who's just being extremely analytical and we make sure that when the customer gets it, it's as straightforward as can be. Fantastic. John, I think we found an engineer with common sense because I understood all of what Levi said. You Levi, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. That was very interesting and I'm not an engineer at all. But yeah, he wasn't talking about John DePietro. He was talking about John Rocco? John, John oh. Brock. John Brock. Yeah. yeah. Who, yeah. who was here with us today and all works. Listen closely, you could hear Horky and John Brock talking while we were filming. Uh, well, they were in your responsibility. I left them in your hands. Yeah, while, exactly. While well, you couldn't have because yeah. I was in the video. If you know, we had, we had several other viewpoints and um, angles that I shot with that instead of just standing there with the camera in my hand and waiting for you to do something. Hey, do me a favor, bring up bring up Don's comment at 734. Kevin, this was what I was telling. Jeff doesn't know this. 
our fans are so great. Join us every week that when they come to the show late, they apologize. Oh, okay. <laughs> they apologize. Well, oh, Don, you, you, you're missing a great one. Uh, bring up Bernie for a minute there. And uh, John, take care of that one. Well, we at Bernie's in Merrimack sell the Springdale product. We and the customers are very happy with the consistency of the product. And the warranty requests are especially low, which must make our friends and customer service happy because they don't have to take several calls about that. But, um, you know, Walter said what he said. I don't know if, if we mentioned um, Cheryl. Cheryl at 732, Bill. We stay loyal to Keystone due to the great customer service I experienced since 2012. That's 10 years ago. When searching for a fifth wheel, we said we did not want to chance another company to treat us as well as Keystone. We bought a blah, 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 Cougar. Our third, you know what? Here's how you tell whether you got good product or not. If the same person is buying it over again, okay? I mean, you can do all the testing you want and services, but the reality is if they've bought two products from you, you're done good. If they would bought three products from you, you've done much gooder than you ever thought you would have. So that I think speaks for itself. And Bob, we don't know Cheryl Kilroy. We've no, never met her. We have met no didn't talk to her today at all. No, nope, no. Nope. How about John Bonfiglio? Is he an employee? John's with us. Yeah, John's. Yeah, John's our, uh, he's our Northeast uh, hideout rep. He's on, he's on the road this week, um, but uh, he found some time to get to the show today. A Northeast rep? Mm-hmm. Northeast, yes, for Haida. Who's never been in my office. Who's never seen me or told to come tell me about his hideouts or ask about some other dealers that might want to sell the hideouts. The introduction is coming shortly. Shortly, probably was, at the end of the show. Made. It was just made. <laughs> <laughs> we have a phone call. Let's, let's, let's Walter's, Walter's comment down there, uh, Bill. Well, almost, yeah, almost as big as our shake. He's with Dell Technologies, so he's talking about his environmental chambers. Brad Moore, where the hell you been, Brad? It's it, what is it? It's it's seven forty-two. My and fault. No apology, Brad. No, no apology. Well, oh, oh, John. All right, we'll catch up, John. Brad Moore <laughs> says, "Proud to sell passports since inception." Hi, Kevin. Yeah, but here I. Brad, Brad is. Kevin, you know everyone. Yeah, Brad. Brad's a solid. You know, he's a he's a great Keystone dealer. Um. You know, I've known Brad for most of my career and does, uh, you know, great. An, another family owned dealership um, that he's part of. It's just, you know, and his dad's still, guy. what's it, Brad, how old's your dad? 90 something? 96. 97. 90. I don't know. I always forget. Great guy. Bob Moore, the founder of Bradford RV, named after Brad. Yeah. Uh, and Brad, by the way, I wouldn't even have this job if it wasn't for Brad because Brad was one of the original. 90. Dealers got together to form the New England RV Dealers Association years ago and served on the board for many years. And, and it's a great example. We're very fortunate in New England. We've talked about it before. We have a tremendous number of multi-generational family yeah. dealerships. And, and Brad's customer loyalty is amazing. It's a 98. Nin- yeah, 98. 90, 90, 90, 98. Saturday. Is that, wow. Hey, so, you know, we're talking about all these different brands and how um, – you know, they compete with each other to a certain extent, but, you know, they're part of the family. But we had an opportunity this afternoon to speak with two gentlemen that are product managers, general managers. They're, they're general managers of our lightweight divisions, um, Colin Deckett, and, uh, which is over Passport, and Jeff Wagner, who's over our Bolo product line. Right. And basically, before we roll that tape, um, they told us, in fact, Ronald said to us this afternoon at noontime, he said, tonight, you are going to hear from two heavyweights in the lightweight department, whereas Kevin's in the welterweight department. <laughs> that would have been good. And um, I wish he said that. Yeah. 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 So what it boils down to is, um, why don't we get to see that video about the um, new innovations? You're going to be interested in some of these innovations that they're really doing some heavy duty testing on. Yep. So, Bill, roll number four, Bill. I've always. Hey, everybody, welcome back to our Day at Keystone. You know, there was that movie, A Day at the Museum. Well, this is our Day at Keystone. And as we continue the talent search throughout this gigantic campus here in Goshen, we are happy to have Colin and Jeff with us. And uh, guys, why don't you, uh, first of all, welcome to your company. Um, 
Thank you. That was, that was, you. That was a thank joke, guys. You. Yeah, thanks yeah. for having so, us. Say yeah. that again. Maybe they'll get, get into it. Welcome to your company. Well, thank you for yeah. having us. It's great to be here. And secondly, <laughs> tell us the specific um, brand that you're involved with. Sure. My name is Colin Deck, and I'm one of the general managers here at Keystone RV, and specifically the Passport product, Fusion, uh, Toy Haulers, and also Montana Full Profile Fifth Wheels. Okay. And then I am the general manager here at Keystone, Jeff Wagner is my name, and I have Alpine, Avalanche, Arcadia, Bullet, and Springdale. Yes. So he does more than you. He does, <laughs> and he reminds me often. Constantly. Constantly. <laughs> so, you know what, the, the travel trailer segment is just huge. I mean, you got tenters and travel trailers and then motorized, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, Every year, there are small innovations that come out. I mean, there's not real major changes in the look every year, but what are some of the things that are coming into, uh, that we'll see on the, on the uh, RV lot, the dealer lots in the next year or so? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. It's one of those things that we challenge ourselves with, you know, year in and year out. Because, I mean, on the travel trailer side of things, uh, you're right. It, it covers a vast uh, majority of our customers in the RV industry. So it's something that we're trying to think through all the time. But I think, you know, when we look on how they're being used out there in the marketplace, with that post-COVID boom, you've had um, restrictions on the amount of uh, camping sites that are available to our consumers because of the number of new people that are exactly the so market. there's more people that are out there camping today which is absolutely great for our industry but when we do that we have to think in a different capacity that allows them to diversify the way they camp um, certainly one of the front runners for us you know at Keystone our solar program that's solar. been out for a couple years and batteries and then batteries, batteries with the lithium that it changes not only the way they camp, where they can camp, but also that consumer experience on all the items that are on their coach to operate properly with a fully charged battery and those types of things. So that's that's been a big campus endeavor that we've um, that we've had to approach and look at from a standpoint of travel trailers. But I think more importantly, where you know uh, Jeff and I have challenged ourselves is how do we bring some features that are available on the travel trailers that we haven't seen before? And for us, you know, making them lighter weight, yep. more towable, um, fuel efficient uh, from the standpoint of towability as fuel prices go up. So there's some things that we're doing, you know, from a standpoint of the components, making them lighter weight. Our hyperdeck flooring and our um, bullet and passport lineup is certainly a big attribute to that. Um, one of the things that, you know, makes it lighter weight, incredibly durable, um, and it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't get affected by water penetration in there where some Jeff, of our competition Jeff, hang in there, Jeff. Well, he'll be done in a few yeah. minutes. So that, oh, that's a big component as well. And then the last thing I'm going to say is that you'll see coming You're right. It is the last thing. We're <laughs> almost out of time. Yeah. Is the windows. We're okay. going to do some acrylic windows for lightweight and uh, mm. more performance out of, uh, out of the window packages. Okay. There. Jeff, let me ask you this question. Um, since COVID, the demographics have changed considerably with the new people that are coming into the industry um, as consumers that are much, much younger. Have there been any trends that you've seen that have um, gotten back to you that say, you know, we need to address that issue, whether it be more bunk beds or whether it be more um, um, other features, any, anything that you can... Yeah, I think one of the things that we've seen, and it's it's been a a refreshing trend is typically we we always associated the first time buyers with families with children and I think a lot of the first time buyers are young couples and without, maybe even pre kids without kids yeah. without kids so we've been more conscious of trying to identify floor plans that will attract that demographic of mm. buyer how about the weight issue with um, uh, keeping it as lightweight as possible so you don't have to go out and buy a big diesel pickup truck is that something that you're looking at? it's a constant uh, in our bullet and passport lineup it's a constant focal point to make proper choices to you know consciously and kind of um, purposefully make sure that we we keep the weight out of the unit or mm. whatever decisions well, we make yeah. yeah we try to do it in the best fashion that's going to that's mm. going to be conscious of weight so it certainly seems to be the case that even though you've got a, a million units out there over a million units uh -huh. out there um, that you're not um, standing still. I mean, you're always looking to change and provide the next new thing. As soon as you stand still, someone's catching you. Go. Okay. And you know who's catching us? 
father time or mother time or whoever person time because we are out of time for this segment. We want to thank you so much. And let's get back to our studio people, Kevin and Jeff. We're doing fantastic on time. We got we got 10 minutes left. We could probably talk for another two or three hours. Jeff, any comments at, at this point from 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 what you've seen and, and about the, the team that you've put together? No, I love seeing it. I hadn't seen a lot of this. I, I'd only read what the segments were going to be about. I really enjoyed, you know, Colin and Jeff's answers there. And we should go back to, you know, Christy, who we talked about at the beginning, who kind of wrangled all this together. Um, she is she's pervasive in everything we do from setting direction like Camp Better to putting this together. And, and you can see her preparation really it pays off. It was phenomenal. Yeah. It was it was phenomenal. Um, want, want to bring up um, Garrett's comment. Oh, Garrett. Yeah, we like Garrett. He's, yeah. Garrett's one of us. Oh, he's one of you guys too? Mm -hmm. Oh, and he's in our service department. He's one of our managers. So is he in the Cougar service department or the Keystone service Keystone? department? He's over, he's over everything. So with all the other salesmen you get out there, the guy sitting over here is the gun that sold him on the Cougar. That's right. Kevin's the best. Kevin, I thought you, you must walk on water, Horky. I don't know. <laughs> and, and we also have a, a celebrity guest here tonight, Willie Miller, who right. uh, is hey, part Willie. of the Thor family, not the Keystone family, says hello. And, um, you know, and Bernie's got a side conversation, so he's saying, hi, hey, Will. Bernie, you know the rule. There's no side conversations. In fact, I'm surprised, unless we scrolled back up, I – Tim probably got all excited when he saw Ryan sign on. Yeah. He's our, uh, they usually have a couple side deals. They, they almost always have a couple. We're probably so busy tonight, we probably missed it, Tim. So you probably skated a little bit. Uh, we, should go to our, we should go, Bob, to our uh, uh, video that you did. at. Uh, yeah, we're going uh, we're, we're to do that. Then we're going to come back for some closing so comments. So, so Jeff, nobody's, been, nobody's being fired based upon what they did on camera today? Not so far. Not so far. Okay. Not so far. So Nick's got Nick's got the the last Nick's got the last Nick. One where more are chance. you? Huh? So so Walter Swenson, they could rename this unit the Walter Swenson Memorial Home, home Office. Yeah, so not Memorial. Bob, Billy, don't talk Bill, about Bill, that. Up the uh, Montana. Okay, roll that tape. Pay attention to this, because I'll tell you, if if I was going to buy a fifth wheel today, this would be it. This is an unbelievable fifth wheel. All right, we've kept the best for last, but this is fantastic. I'm with Nick Evan, Evan Roth of Montana, Montana Product Manager. Yes, sir. And this is a brand new unit, brand new floor plan. So I don't want to give them the end result, but stay till the end of it. Do not click off this video until it ends. Got that? All right. Nick, what do we got? So you're right, new floor plan, but we'll start in the back. So pull out storage tray. This is something that we've seen a lot of ask for from our customers is by doing a raised end, you get a big storage on the outside, pull out tray. As you work around to the side, you've got an outdoor kitchen. So this is neat. You've got a drop down 24 inch griddle and you have a 12 volt refrigerator drawer. So that way you can throw all your drinks and everything and, in there. And this is traveling. raised up. Explain the benefit of the raised, the raised part up here. So what this is, when we walk inside, you'll notice, but this is a raised king bed slide up, up top. But by doing this raise where you do steps up top, that's where you get all this storage. Because if not, if you're on a flat surface, then you don't get all this outside storage. So key for us for, to be, give all our right. customers all, all the storage I'm they excited. need. You got my attention already. Okay. All let's, right. let's go to the inside okay. and see what we got here. Pop in. Hey, John. Welcome back. All right. So raised rear end, that's what we're referring to. So as you walk up, you've got your full bath right here. So any of your guests can access it and you can in your in your rear bedroom. So large king size bed in the back, plenty of storage. You have washer dryer prep in this back so you can set everything up that you need to here. But the biggest things we want to talk about are towards the front of the unit. And, and this bath is nice because it, it's a separate room all to itself. So you're not sharing it with another room. Absolutely. So in this kitchen, one of the things that you might notice that we didn't do is we didn't put an island here. And by doing that, it makes it feel a lot more open, yep, right? Yep. You don't lose countertop space though, because we pull out, we do pull out countertop space, kind of like what you see in a lot of motorhomes. 
But by doing this pull out, now you still have plenty of prep space, but to get rid of that island, it makes it feel a little and more you, congested. You have access to the dining table, yes. so you cook, you put, place it over there. Right to the table, and then you have big, big pantries on this side, and you have options for either residential refrigerator or 12 volt refrigerator. We do both options. And a very stylish color scheme for today's market. You got it, All exactly. Right, let's go up and do yep. Go ahead, we'll walk up top. Some of our best selling floor plans are our front living. So when we designed this floor plan, we wanted to do our front living, which gives you plenty of space here, theater seats that have lumbar support, everything else that you need. But then these, both of these make into beds. So then that way you've got extra sleeping space for friends and family that come and stay with you. Um, so all of this is set up really, really helpful for, for our customers. Yeah, and, and the other thing too is you can communicate with anybody that's down in the kitchen. Yes. So you have complete access and visibility. Watch the ball game, grab a beer. Exactly. It's pretty good. Yes. You know what? I would notice when we come up here, what's over in the corner? Because lots of times people put washer dryers. Is there something special that might be behind? So you? that's what's special about so this if unit. You, if you clicked off, you missed it. Yes. This is the special part about the unit. Is this is our thirty nine forty one front office. So the biggest thing about this is we wanted to give a dedicated office space, which you can come in and take a look at this. So this gives you a big L-shaped counter. So now you have spots for multiple monitors. You've got a cork board to hang up pictures of your friends and family that you're missing. You've got a spot for a printer. But most importantly, you have this giant That's windshield, amazing. right? Yeah, yeah. So now I can sit here and now as I'm doing my work, I can look out into the mountains or the beach or the lake or whatever it is that you might see here. So this is something that, you know, during COVID, we just kept feeling more and more customers that were working remotely and, and we wanted and to truly look, give them a spot. Yeah, and when you look at the market today, the flexibility of being socially mobile, they get a chance to work in their RV, travel and work in their RV. And I think one of the things there too with it, having that closed door is when you are working, you can close off that door and get to work or when you're done working, hey, the, the office work is done for the day, let's close this off and let's get back to spending family time with our family and enjoying the camping instead of using that office to have it set So up. you're at the dining table, you're having breakfast, you're all done with breakfast, you say, honey, I'm going to work. You get up, you walk from there, go into the office, work for four or five hours. Nice yeah, commute. That's enough for today. Come out, honey, I'm home. This is, this is incredible. It's quite the commute, isn't it? It is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about social remote. All right, Nick, thank you very much. My that, pleasure. That thank great. you for what taking a, a look what at that. What a terrific the, product. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for taking a look at our front office. We really appreciate it. So, Zagami, we have three questions there uh, and comments. Uh, wow, uh, very nice layout. Please tell me that the window has a shade. Yes. And Kevin said it does, right, Jeff? Yes, it does. Okay, that's a great idea, says Steve Hogan. What's the length of that unit? Anybody know what the length of that one was? So 40, it's got to be 42 or 44 feet. Yeah. yeah. 42 or 44? 40, I, think it, I think it's 44 feet, actually. Yeah. And I think uh, self-serving Sam has uh, posted something else here. Wow, <laughs> what a great innovative floor plan for Montana. <laughs> uh, can, you tell, can I tell that story? Go ahead. So that was a handoff floor plan. Sam was still working with Montana at the time. He had done that floor plan. He's going to kill me for saying that. I don't think he had the guts to put it out there. <laughs> but he had it on paper. Um, he had been working on it. And as Nick transitioned into the brand, um, he took it to um, took it to its final place and, and put it to market. So it was a nice handoff. Need that. Dante wants that office. Jim Murgo says beautiful place. And Jim Roy says that thing is huge. And, um, you know, Bob, we should thank our hosts for um, – really 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 making it so easy for us to put on this show and um you know let you know folks if you're looking for a company that is concerned with its customers i think that keystone proved that to be the case today and um you know jerry jerry plant says too bad i'm retired steven home super innovative perfect for today's perfect for today's work from home customers but um, but you're right john it, it's been an incredible day that we've been here on the uh Goshen campus and met so many of the wonderful uh, employees and and this whole thing as I said before was driven by Jeff and Kevin they they put it all together they had a great team and he, even Chris Andrew agrees great great show uh, we believe it or not we've come to that sixty minute mark again it doesn't take too long 
when you got That's two funny. Italians, got two Italians talking, and then we had two guests. <laughs> guests tonight, so uh, we really get into it. Steve, thank you very much. Great, great tool storage on that. Jerry Plant. Thumbs Good up. Time. Jerry, Jerry, and Jerry's particular. He doesn't, he doesn't hesitate if he doesn't like something. He didn't do it. Kevin, I'm going to give you a couple of closing words. I'm going to let Jeff close it out. Here, listen, just here. Thanks for the partnership we have with, with a, all of our dealers up in the Northeast, uh, you know, the New England States. And, and thank you guys for taking the time to spend the day with us. We, we really enjoyed it. You know, it wasn't work to us. It's a, it's a partnership and uh, we appreciate it. So Jeff, with that, you can take over. Uh, no, I, I'll piggyback on that. This is we know this is a little outside of the norm for you guys, so we really appreciate that you brought this here for us. Um, it's really special for us. We appreciate it, and everybody here was it was amazing because all of our team wanted to be a part of this, and that says a lot. Well, we thank, thank you. you. It's, uh, it yeah. was fantastic, really great. Kevin, thank you, and uh, Bill, we'll let you close it out with the music, and uh, we will see you folks next week. Don't forget, Joel Holland, CEO of Harvest House, will be back with us next week. On that. Have a great evening, everyone. See you soon. This edition of RVing in New England was a presentation of the New England RV Dealers Association. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram.